So in this video, I'm going to be going over how to make a 3D type effect, kind of like this example right up here. And I know I've made 3D type videos in the past, but I thought this particular example looked pretty cool. And also it has some unique problems because of the particular font that I use that I thought might be helpful and interesting for you to figure out how to solve them. And off to the left hand side here, I have a little cheat sheet for me just so I can remember exactly what I did to create this effect. Because with effects like this, the size of the font, the amount of pixels you apply to them, it all matters because it is size based like that. So here's my little cheat sheet that I'll be referencing myself and you can also reference when you're watching this video. So for the word walrus incognito, I used a font called Monoton and it is a totally free font and I will link that in the description of this video. So if you want to pause this video, go ahead and download that font, you can certainly do that. And also this font below, which I think is a super cool looking serif font is called Arvo. I'll also link a download to that in the description so you can grab that as well if you're interested in it. But once you've done that and you're ready to go, you just want to select your type tool from the toolbar. So the type tool looks like a T in your toolbar. If you hit the T letter on your keyboard, it'll select that for you so it's really easy. Just click once on your screen in order to bring up the type tool. This version of Illustrator starts the type with some dummy text, some lorem ipsum text. Yours might not do that. If yours doesn't do that, it doesn't really matter. All I have to do then is type out the word that you want to apply this effect to. So I'll just type out make stuff because that seems relatively appropriate. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit the selection tool on my keyboard, which is the black arrow, so that this make stuff text right here is selected. And I want to use the character window to increase the size of this font because for the effects that I'm using to look appropriate, based on the different settings I have, the font has to be the proper size. The typeface has to be the proper size in points. So to set the font size, you wanna to go to your character window. You can also do it up here in the top of your toolbar screen when your type is selected. So I can go ahead and hit 72 and then enter in here, but the character window will be useful later on. So you want this open. To open the character window, go to window up at the top, and from the window up at the top, the drop down menu near the bottom, there'll be an option that says type. And from type, you want to make sure character is selected and visible on your screen. It appears that control plus T is the shortcut on a Windows machine, at least. It might be command plus T on a Mac, but you can go to window, type, and then character to bring this window up right here as well. So this option that looks like a small T and a big T that says set the font size when you highlight over it, that's where you can go ahead and set the font size. So we want to make that 72. So I'm just going to type that and then hit enter into that box. And you can tell it went ahead and make it bigger. And then for the font itself, this is where you enter that in. This is saying Myriad Pro for me. It might say something different for you. I'm just going to click this once. And because I know the font is called Monoton, you can actually just go ahead and type that out. And then as you type it up, it'll automatically sort through this and let you see the search examples. So that's a faster way than using the drop down arrow, which you can also use the drop down arrow if you want to go and pick stuff like that, but typing it out is just faster. So I tend to do things that are as fast as possible when I'm working. So here is the basic typeface that we're going to be applying these effects to. So to do all the cool effects that are shown in this typeface, what you want to do is have your appearance window open. I'm just going to move this character off for the side quick. And the appearance window will be super important because that's where we make all these different changes. So to get the appearance window, once again, go to window up at the top. And from the window up at the top, you want to make sure appearance is checked. If it has a checkbox, it's somewhere on your screen. So just find it wherever it might be hiding. So here's my appearance window, and that's where we're going to be making these changes. So what I'm going to do is from the appearance window at the bottom in the lower left, there's a couple options. The one on the far left will be add a new stroke and the one on the right of that will be add a new fill. We want to change the color of this fill. So I'm just going to hit add a new fill. And as you can tell, it adds some new options in here for us to pick from. Fill is currently selected right here. And if I click on this one up here, this is the stroke. So whichever one is selected is what you'll be modifying. And it's the same thing over here on your little toolbar, but you actually want to make these changes in the appearance window. So for fill, I'm just going to actually change the fill of the type. I'm going to click this swatch and I'm going to select red, which is just to the right of the black. It's called CMYK red. You can pick any color you want. If you don't see a color you want in this selection window, you can go ahead and just, I'm going to click off my type so it doesn't apply it. You can double click on the color picker here in your toolbar, pick a color of your choice, and then hit OK. 
And then in the swatches window, which is right here on my screen, to get the swatches window, just go to window and then swatches. Everything is basically named as it is under window, so you can find all this stuff like that. So the swatches are under swatches. Just make sure there's a checkbox. So here's my swatches window. If you click, hold, and drag on this color that you just picked in the color picker of your toolbar, click, hold, and drag that fill, and then just drag it off over into the swatches and drop it. It adds that as a swatch that you can then reference from the appearance window. So once again, and by the way, whenever you're making any changes to the type in the appearance window, make sure your stuff is selected. If your stuff isn't selected and it changes to that green we just stuck in there, nothing happens because it doesn't know what you're trying to apply it to. So always make sure you use your selection tool and select over the thing that you're doing this to. So if I wanted to use that green, I can go ahead and make this make stuff green, but I prefer red, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. So the next step is we wanna add this white stroke around the type as is shown above in this example. To do that, what we wanna do is, right here is the stroke window, which is currently above the fill window. You wanna click, hold, and drag in an area of this where there isn't a box, so it actually lets you click, hold, and drag it, and you just wanna drag it below the fill window. If you can't do that, if there isn't enough room, and by the way, it actually helps not to have it selected when you click, hold, and drag, because then it leaves a really big box, so that's one way of solving that problem. Make sure fill is selected, then just click, hold, and drag on stroke, and drag it below fill. And we're doing that so that the stroke doesn't go on top of the letters we have here because this behaves much like Photoshop layers where the things in the top will overlap the things that are below them. So the order here definitely does matter. And with stroke below the type, it'll never overlap it because the visibility is behind it. So I'm going to click on the stroke right here and change the color to white. And because I've done this before, I know what to set my stroke weight to. I know that I have to set it to 12 in order for it to look the way I want it to look. So I'm just going to do that right now. You can also just highlight over the number, enter the number in, and then hit enter that might be a little bit quicker way of doing that for you. So next up here, I'm just gonna click on this bottom thing so that isn't selected, so I have a larger area to grab this in. I'm gonna click, hold, and drag this stroke that I just went ahead and made those changes to, to the new page icon at the bottom of this little palette here. It's just to the left of the garbage can. So just click, hold, and drag that onto the new page and then let go. And what that does is duplicates the exact stroke that we just made. So right here, as you can tell, there's now two strokes instead of one. And it also remembered the settings at 12 point with a white stroke. That's just a really quick way of duplicating these things inside of the appearance window. But we don't want this stroke to be white because we've already made this initial white stroke. So we wanna make the black stroke that is behind it. To do that, just once again, click on the stroke right here. You wanna change the color from white to black or whatever color you happen to want to change it to, it doesn't matter up to your style choice there. As you can see, we made that change, but you can't see it here at all because the stroke is the exact same as the white stroke. So I'm just gonna highlight over this 12 and I'm gonna make it 24 and then I'm gonna hit enter. So now we see that we have a much larger black stroke behind the white stroke. And there's also something that I had set previously that I forgot to change back to default. If, for example, your type has some crazy stuff going on, I'm gonna bring my stroke window over here so you can kind of see this. I had reset the miter limit of this particular font to two, but by default, it's four. So I'm gonna highlight this stroke that's black. I'm gonna change the limit from two to four so you can see what's going on there. And then I'm gonna click on the white stroke and change that from two back to the default of four. So what we're seeing here is when the miter limit is set to the default on this particular font, you get some really strange interactions happening on this letter A, where it kind of freaks out and draws these weird jaggy points that don't make sense for the font that we're working with. So we definitely don't want that to happen. If you ever see weird jaggy points like this happening, it has to do with the miter joins as this font is sort of being combined together, specifically because of the way these lines and this letter A look. If you wanna reduce that and remove that, you just make sure you have your stroke selected in your appearance window. And then from the stroke window, which is right here on my screen, and by default, if it doesn't look like this, if your stroke window doesn't look like this, there's a little menu in the right hand corner, that looks like four lines. I'll hide the options to show you what it might look like for you. You wanna make sure you click on this little menu and then go to show options, which will show you all the different options that are available. So I basically have 
all my different tool sets with all the options shown at all times because they tend to be super useful. And by the way, when you're making these changes, once again, make sure that your type is actively selected. I just tried doing this in this video. It's edited out so you can't see my mistake, but I made those changes and nothing happened because my type wasn't highlighted with my selection tool. So I'm going to select the white stroke in my appearance window here so it's currently active. I'm going to change the miter limit from four to two, hit enter. You can see that crazy white jaggy line went away. I'm going to select my black stroke and that miter limit is still set to four. So I'm going to highlight that, hit two, and then hit enter. And as you can tell, there's a little visible. This is just a bug. If you zoom in and out, it'll go away. It went ahead and solved that problem for us. It's really easy to do that, which is pretty nice. And also something that just looks bad on this particular example for stuff, I'm going to highlight my type again. I don't like how in these Fs, there's this little gap of uh, black that shows through the white. So I'm just going to increase the stroke of my white to be bigger to 13 point so that that goes away. I just think this looks a little bit cleaner. And I'm also going to increase the stroke of my black because I made it exactly double the white. So I'm going to move that from 24 to 26, which is double of 13. If your font didn't have that issue, or if your words didn't have that issue, don't worry about that. Not really a big deal. I just want to make this look as good as it can. So now is the really fun part where we use the appearance window to make some changes. So once again with this, I'm going to move my stroke up here so it's not in the way. Make sure your type is selected so that it's active. And this is where we do these transform settings right here, where it says black transform horizontal 0.1 pixel, vertical 0.1 pixel, and 100 copies. To do that, you just want to make sure that your black stroke is currently selected in your appearance window. And then when that's selected and making sure that your type is selected so that these changes actually apply, there's an FX button for effects at the bottom of the appearance window, just to the right of the add a new fill button. You just want to make sure that you go ahead and click that. And from that, you want to go to distort and transform. It's near the top. So FX and then distort and transform. And from distort and transform, you want to select the option that says transform. So I'm just go ahead and do that. That opens up this transform effect window right here on my screen. So in order to make this kind of cool 3D effect, what you want to do is change the move and we're going to move it and then copy that move. So it's going to copy that effect a bunch of times, which makes the move happen a bunch of times. And that makes the 3D effect that you see right here. So in this particular example, I found that 0.1 pixel by 0.1 pixel, whoops, 0.1, not one, tends to look really good. And I'm also going to check this preview button in the lower left-hand corner here so we can see these changes as they happen. And under copies, I'm going to change it from zero copies to 100 copies. And I'm just going to click in one of these different text fields so that'll go ahead and apply that in real time. So as you can see right here, I'm just going to hit OK so I can zoom in and check out this. Let's move this over a little bit as I zoom in on these corners that were extruded. There we go. You can see that this looks a little tiny bit jaggy if I keep on zooming around here, but it, it'll kind of help you see how this move is happening. So these tiny little jaggy marks just show that there's a move happening. And that is the 100 different times this has been moved and repeated. So if you ever want to reduce the amount of jagginess that these corners have, right now I'm zoomed in at, let's see, 3,200%. So it's not really that big of a deal if you were to print this out. But if it looks really bad at, let's say, 100%, you can always make your numbers smaller. So under the appearance window with your type selected, always make sure your type is selected. Under the stroke, you can just click where it says transform. And when you do that, it'll remember the settings that you had previously. So if, for example, in this one where it says 0.1, if that wasn't enough, if it doesn't look good to you, you can make it something like 0 0.05. And I'm going to change this one below it to 0 0.05 as well. I'm going to turn my preview back on so we can go ahead and actually see what happened here. And as you can tell, now that jaggy line area looks way smoother, but it also looks much smaller. So to offset that, you can increase the amount of copies. So we made it half the size. So I'll just go ahead and double the copies from 100 to 200, hit OK. And then it goes ahead and makes this a much larger extrude we had before. So if you ever have weird jaggy lines that just don't look good to you, just make the amount that you move smaller and it should solve that problem. And when you do that, make sure you increase the amount of copies. But that's really it for this video as far as the 3D stuff goes. This font right here is called Arvo. So you can go ahead and use Arvo Bold if you want to make a little statement underneath of that. Once again, to do that, you can just hit T on your keyboard for the type tool, click once on your screen, type out whatever you want this to say. So this says make stuff up top. So I'll say, because it's cool. 
and then I'll hit my selection tool so I can have this type selected. We want to change this font to Arvo. So I'll just go up to the top here and use this search bar. Since it's easy, I'll type A-R-V-O for Arvo. We know it's Arvo bold. And then I'm going to make this something smaller, like let's say 24 point using this drop down menu at the top. You can also just grab one of the corners right here to resize it. If you want to do that, make sure you hold shift as you resize it. So when you grab it, it's perfectly proportioned. If you don't hold shift, you can do some crazy stuff like this, which is pretty much always a bad idea. Don't do that. So just always make sure you hold shift before you resize and then it will maintain its proportions and it will look appropriate. And something very quick I forgot to mention earlier, if you ever want to resize this thing that you just made and make sure that it still looks appropriate, like it's scaled appropriate, if you're resizing this and for some reason it looks wrong, you just want to make sure that scale strokes and effects is turned on in your Illustrator settings. To do that on a Windows-based machine, you go to edit. This might be under Illustrator menu if you're using a Mac, but either edit or Illustrator, and then you want to go to preferences. And from preferences, you want to go to general. And in this big old general menu of a bunch of different stuff, you want to make sure the option called scale strokes and effects has a checkbox next to it. It should be in the right hand corner at the very bottom of the options there. So just make sure scale strokes and effects is checked before you try to rescale stuff. And then you can go ahead and hit OK in this preferences window. And that way, when you resize this or rescale this, it'll appropriately scale all the different strokes and effects so that the thing that you're making looks the way it should. But that is it for this video. I do hope you found this tip helpful. I think this is a really cool style that's just fun to work with. It makes things look super impactful. Even if you say something totally stupid like walrus incognito, for whatever reason, this looks impressive. And that's the cool part of design. You can make really stupid things look somehow important pretty easily, just like this example. So if you did find this video helpful, please hit the thumbs up button. It lets me know that you appreciated it. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave those. I always appreciate seeing comments in the comment section. You can let me know what you thought about this video, or if you have any future videos that you'd like to see, I always love hearing those opinions. And if you did find this helpful and you want to see more stuff like this, please subscribe. I do my very best to keep creating new content just like this for designers. Thank you so much for watching.